If we read in the fifth chapter, I want to, for you to look and look closely, and I'll read, and I will begin in the second verse, and I'll read down to the ninth verse, and it reads as follows. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water steppeth in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Ninth verse and last verse. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And all the same day was the, on the same day was the Sabbath. Would you bow your head? Amen. As you sit, be seated. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, the opportunities in God. Mm. Uh, I, I want to talk about that because we... We don't see the opportunities in God. We see the opportunities in the world and what the world has to offer. But for the most part, we don't see those opportunities in the Lord. As much as he tries to show us, as much as he tries to tell us, we rarely see those opportunities but I'm here to tell someone that the Lord that we serve is a God of opportunities there's no way for you to be where you are right now if the Lord was not with you if the Lord had not opened up a door for you if, if the Lord had not made a way for you you wouldn't be where you are right now because there was a time that we lived without him. And some of us soon forget how we had the struggles and we had the ups and we had the downs. But God had given us opportunities. There was a time that you needed help. But I'm here to tell you, you always going to need his help. But there was a time where you was worse off than where you are right now. Uh, there was... A time where you would call on God and he didn't answer you how you uh, needed the answer. But he called when he answered, he was on time. That's why they sing a song and they say he's an on time God. Uh, we are put ourselves in position where we uh, we have called too much on the things of the world. That what it does, it just has zapped us and have taken things away from us and has stripped us from uh, some of our self-worth and our values. And so many times when we call God, we call him in a state uh, of low self-esteem. We call him in a state where we uh, don't have the ability, we don't think highly of ourselves as God has placed us to be and he placed us in the position that he placed us in. There was times that we uh, did not know him and we were in trouble. 
we were in sicknesses that God had to, only God had to help us from. We were in, at, at, at positions in our life where we uh, felt like giving up. We look at people in the world today that feel like giving up and they don't have any hope. They don't have any aspirations in life. They don't have any goals. And even those that have goals, even those that have aspirations in this world, then the end of those aspirations is gloom. The end of those aspirations in this world is death. But the aspirations that you have in God, the goals that you set in God, the things that you try to attain in him, he will allow you to attain it and it will offer you eternal life. It wasn't until the Lord had opened up doors for you uh, that you were given opportunities. It wasn't until the Lord looked your way that you looked the way that you look. That you started to walk the way that you walk. That you act the way that you act. That your mind was illuminated like it's been illuminated. It wasn't until God touched you, until the Lord brought you out, until he showed you another way. Uh, there wasn't until he did the things that he did for you. Uh, uh, because before, you remember the, how you used to think? You remember the things that you used to go through? Do you remember the struggles that you used to have? But God. But the opportunities that the Lord that he has provided for you. Yeah. And so many times we take those opportunities for granted. We take it for granted that he's opened up our understanding to know that he is the one that wakes us up each and every day. Yeah. That we don't wake ourselves up. We take it for granted that he's the one that provides for us each and every day. That he allows us to go to the cupboard and open up the cupboard, to go to the refrigerator, open up the refrigerator, to go to our closets, open up the closets, and to be able to pick and choose from whatever it is that we want because he has made a way. Uh, we soon forget uh, how he has brought us over and how he's brought us through. We soon forget that the opportunities of God, the doors that he has opened. Do you remember the doors that was closed? That you never had the opportunity to get it, to receive the things uh, that you needed, the things that you wanted until God opened the things up for you. Uh, I'm reminded and, and my brother, he knows uh, firsthand of I've been walking with the Lord for 26 years now. And I was in such a bad state of being uh, financially, uh, uh, mentally, socially. I just had some real issues. And I went to the state, I had spent everything I had, didn't have, a, 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 what they say, a, a penny to my name. Uh, didn't have a place to really lay down my head. Uh, but the Lord, he had uh, started to look my way and he started opening up doors for me. He started opening up doors of opportunity for me. And that's one thing that we must always remember. That all the things that we have, the mindset that we have the things that we, where we are right now, it's because of him. Look at your name and say, where I am, it's because of him. What I am accomplished, what I have accomplished in life, it's because of him. What I have in my possession is because of him. Who I am is because of him. We must not forget the fact of the opportunities uh, of God. And the things that he has brought our way and the things that he has afforded us uh, to have. We look at a story here and we find that it is one that is so familiar to some. But we look at a story where we have a young man here. It does not specify his name, but it tells us something about him. Uh, it tells us that he had some issues, for he was an impotent man, for he was lame in his physical being. The scripture tells us that he had been lame for a number of years, for 38 long years. That's, that's a long time. Uh, said that he was in his bed of affliction for 
a long time. Uh, it said that he went through for a long time. Uh, some of us, we look at uh, the things that we encounter, but we don't mind going through, but don't let it be for a long time. Uh, we don't mind going through some tests and going through some trials, but let it be for a short time. Uh, one of the attributes that we don't want in God, and that is the long suffering. And that's the thing that God, that's one of his attributes, but that's the thing that, uh, that he will have for us to, uh, to exhibit, to us to experience, for us to exercise in him is long suffering. To be able to put up with somebody that's talking about you. To be able to put up with somebody who don't mean you any good. To be able to love those that hate you, to despitefully mistreat you, and despitefully use you. And, and, won't you, and the Lord wants you to pray for them. The Lord wants you to do them good but not do them bad. The Lord wants you to do things for them that's going to help them the same way that the Lord had helped you. Uh, could you imagine if the Lord had given up on you? Could you imagine if the Lord had been frustrated with, with all the times that you had said, Lord, I won't do it again, uh, for you to say, Lord, I'm, I won't look that way no more. Lord, I won't touch that again. I won't taste that anymore. Could you imagine how many times you had to told God that, but because, and you turn around and did the total opposite, but look at the long suffering of God. Uh, look at him and how he had even blessed you and still open up doors of opportunity for you uh, he's that type of God that he is a long suffering God and these are the things that he would have for us to exercise within ourselves but it said that this impotent man that he uh, he was lame for 38 long years look at your neighbor and say that's a long time uh, it's a real long time in the scripture it tells us because i'm going to be quick i i'm going to let you out of here but but the scripture it tells us it says that there was a place and uh, and this place where this lame man was he was at a place called bethesda uh and it talks about and it says in the hebrew tongue bethesda having five porches uh, it said, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. And it goes on to describe them. It, uh, it says that some were blind and some were halt and, uh, some withered. Uh, and one thing that I want to look at and I want to put emphasis on in, uh, this letter clause of the third verse, it says, waiting for the moving of the water. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, waiting for the moving of the water. I want to put an uh, emphasis on uh, waiting for the moving of uh, of the water uh, because we find that even all that the people were going through in that day, uh, that they even had some hope. The scripture says, and it talks about this pool of Bethesda, it said that an angel, uh, at least one time a year, it, it would come and it would trouble the water. Uh, it would stir up the water one time a year. Uh, but it tells us that it was a multitude of people that was around the pool. And it says, as they, it said that, and it described those that was around the pool, but, uh, it described the ones that was around the pool and they were impotent folk. They, they were people that had a need. They, they were people that understood the fact that there were no way for them to get out of where they were. There was no way for them to get out from, of their, away from their condition unless God had to do something. Uh, well, we look at this and we find that there was some hope. There was a, a tidbit of hope. There uh, there was a way of hope for them at least one time of year. Uh, it tells us that this pool of Bethesda, that, uh, that these impotent folk, that they hovered around the pool and they waited and for it to be moved uh, because they believed that when it was to move that the angel would be there but the scripture tells us that the first one to get in the pool uh, would be the first one to be healed uh, uh, and that, that, that's hard some time for some uh, uh, but it's easy for others uh, it's, it's hard for those that don't have the ability to, to get around quickly uh, and those that uh, that may be lame within the feet or uh, a lame with that may be paralyzed, if I will. Uh, but for one that may have some, uh, for, for may have some physical disability.
abilities that don't won't prevent them from being quick, won't prevent them from being fast. And they have the ability to get in the pool quickly. Uh, more so than those that are more lame. More so than those that don't have the ability, that don't have the mobility to get around. Uh, we find it was a blessing for those that can move quickly, but for those that did not have the ability to do so, uh, they had some issues. They, uh, they sat there. No doubt that's why he was there for at least 38 long years. And that's why he, hallelujah, the scripture tells us that he had some issues for that length of time. Uh, but we look at the scripture here and it tells us uh, that these impotent folk it said uh, and they were waiting around uh, the pool uh, uh, for the water to be troubled uh, uh, because they believed that when the water was troubled they uh, that the help was at hand they they believed that when the water moved that uh, that the healing they had a chance uh, hallelujah for the, them to be made whole they and they believed that all the things that they went through on the day to day Praise basis. All the things they went through, whether it be blind, whether to be dead, hallelujah, whether they have not have the ability to do the things that normal people had the ability to do. But even then, they had the chance to be made whole. Oh, but we look here, and could you imagine this state? Could you imagine going all year long and not realizing when the water was going to be troubled? Look at God, not knowing when the angel would step into the water. Not knowing when the angel would touch the water and the water would move. I didn't say that it would wait a year, but it would say that he would come during the course of the year. So I mean they had to be attentive to what God was going to do with the angel for the healing to be able to come. And so he had to sit and had to watch. And the first one that had the ability to see it, hallelujah, you had to watch for your blessing to come. Hallelujah, didn't know what time it was going to come didn't know when it was going to come but they believed that it was going to come and they did not know what it was going to be during the winter time or whether it had been during the summer time it didn't make any difference whether it was raining it didn't make any difference whether it was storming it didn't make any difference how hot it was and they were sitting there just waiting on the blessing and you say what are you talking about well they were waiting on the opportunities of God somebody look at their neighbor and say they were waiting on the opportunities of God and they were waiting on the only opportunity that they had and they were waiting on God to move the water in such a way and that they could be healed and we go on and we look at the scripture and we find here hallelujah that Lord he uh, it said that the angel it went down a certain season into the pool and troubled the water hallelujah whosoever then a first after the troubling of the water huh, a step in was made whole of whatsoever disease huh, he had huh. I don't care what they were going through huh. I don't care what uh, 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 problems they had within the body huh. what uh, infirmities they had within the body huh. and they will be made whole huh. um, but there was huh, hallelujah there was uh, uh, something in which they had to do first huh. and they had to be the first one to get in huh. uh, could you imagine all those that was around the pool and no doubt it may have been hundreds hallelujah it may have been thousands but they knew the blessing would come as long as they got in first look at your neighbor and say but you have to get in first Look at your name and say the only way you gonna get your blessing you got to get in first hallelujah and we look at the scripture and the scripture tells us it tells us it said and a certain man he said was there which had an infirmity 38 years and when Jesus saw him lie he knew that he had been now a long time in that position in that case hallelujah he said unto him uh, he made a profound statement he said will thou be made whole hallelujah he said will thou be made whole he said to this man hallelujah who been waiting for a long time and that's the problem with some of us we be waiting a long time for God to do something hallelujah but we be waiting and looking in the wrong direction and looking for God to do things in the way we think God should do some things but God said something to this man and what he said to him he said will thou be made whole could you imagine what that man must have thought 38 young long
long he is. He's been waiting to get in the pool first. Hallelujah. Just for him to be made whole. Hallelujah. Could you imagine his low self-esteem? Could you imagine his mindset to give up? Hallelujah. On all the things on his even his life. Hallelujah. Even, even on his friends. Because the word says that he said, I have no one in which to help me to get into the pool. Hallelujah. No doubt he done uh, used up all his resources. Uh, no doubt there were times that he could turn to people uh, and they would help him do it. Uh, but before you know it, they get frustrated uh, and they get tired. Uh, hallelujah. Not having the ability uh, to help him to get in there first. Uh, hallelujah. They gave up on him. Uh, and that's why he said, I have no one uh, to help me get into the pool. Uh, he did not realize uh, who he was talking to. Uh, he did not realize uh, Hallelujah, it was the God. Hallelujah, of salvation. He did not realize that it was the God of the angel that went into the pool. It was the God that gave the angel the power. Hallelujah, to stir up the pool. He didn't realize when he was talking to the one. Hallelujah, where all the healing came from. He did not realize. Hallelujah, what was at hand. He didn't realize the opportunities of God. He didn't realize the door that God was opening up. And that's how we do sometimes. We don't realize the door that God is opening up. We don't realize the thing that God, just give me a moment. We don't realize the thing that God is trying to tell us day in and day out. We don't realize how he speaks to our heart. Hallelujah. And try to turn our situation around. We don't realize, hallelujah, the doors and the Lord that the Lord tries to open up for you. You said, what is opportunity? Well, opportunity, it is a time, hallelujah, and it is a place, it is a window that God opens up, hallelujah, he will change your circumstances. Well, it will be favorable, hallelujah, on your behalf, hallelujah, where he he will get the glory and he will get the honor. It will be time, hallelujah, that will be favorable and that people will see you and they'll see that God is blessing you, hallelujah, and has given you an opportunity. But the problem is, look at your name and say, but the problem is, the problem is, what are you going to do with the opportunity that God that he gives you? What are you going to do when he opens up that window. Hallelujah. What are you going to do when God opens up? or When he brings you to that time? or When he brings you to that space? or When he brings you to that time where he going to give you something better than where you are? Because opportunity will always give you something better than what you are, what you currently have. Opportunity will bring you from a lower state to a higher state. Opportunity will show you faith that God will have for you. But I'm going to tell you something about opportunity. You don't always hang around. You don't know when it's going to come. Just as the angel, as a boy important, people stood around and they stood around and waited on an opportunity and they did not know when it was going to come. But the simpleton man, when we look at him, he didn't know, hallelujah, and that opportunity we went there with him. He did not know that it was opportunity that was speaking to him. He had the same mindset that he had developed over the 38 long years. It's something else about us. Hallelujah when we don't get. Hallelujah the thing we want. It's something about us. Hallelujah when we go through states of infirmities. When we go through some low states in our life. It will have an effect on our mind. It will affect us in such a way uh, that we only focus uh, on the thing that are happening to us. Uh, but God is trying to bring you uh, uh, to another place in him. Uh, uh, when you recognize uh, uh, hallelujah that he is uh, a God of opportunity uh, uh, you got to always look for God. Uh, you got to always uh, have your eyes open 
hoping and waiting for God to do some things in your life. You never know when the door's going to be open. You don't know when the windows, hallelujah, are going to be open. You got to be ready to receive, hallelujah, the opportunities of God. Somebody give God a hand praise. You got to always be ready to recognize and receive the opportunities of God. It's not easy to recognize the opportunities of God because sometimes the opportunities of God comes through weaknesses. Sometimes it comes through Lack. Sometimes it comes through pain. Sometimes it comes through suffering. Sometimes it comes through confusion. And what I mean it is, is in this way. That you can always recognize it. But you got to learn how to trust God. In everything that you do. Opportunity. Doesn't always. Present itself to tell you. That it's opportunity. You sometime learn. After you've gone through. That it was opportunity. I'm reminded. They end up turning down this development. And the door, op the Lord opened up a door of opportunity for me to go up in the management and I became an assistant manager in that particular, at that particular job. And after becoming an assistant manager, he be allowed me to become a manager. And after becoming a manager, he allowed me to become an assistant director. And after becoming an assistant director, he allowed me to become a director. To be at, one, at, at the, at the uh, third pair of the highest person in the company. Did you hear what I said? But he allowed me to go in first through suffering. And I had to ask, Lord, why did you bring me here? But he had to do some fine tuning and had to train me and teach me how to suffer. Why? Because he had promotion for me. Little did I recognize the door of opportunity for me. It took me to go through the various levels that he was going to put me in. And I started looking back and understanding why I had to go through all the suffering. Little did I know that someone would call me on the phone and the word that I would give them would be the final and the last word, hallelujah, that they needed to provide them housing, that they needed, hallelujah, uh, that it would affect their life. Little did I know that the position that God would put me in would be, the, would be one that would be effective within his kingdom. Do you don't know what God's going to have for you to do. That's why you got to learn how to suffer in him. You got to learn how to go through in him because only he knows what he has in store for you in the future. No, it's not going to feel good to you. No, it's gonna, not going to be the traditional way that you think that the door of opportunity will open for you. And that was what's wrong. That's the problem with this man that was lame for 38 long years. He looked for his opportunity to be in the pool for the pool to be stirred up. Little did he know know that the opportunity stood before him uh, speaking to him asking him did he want to be made whole uh, look at the word of God you don't always recognize the opportunity that is at hand but one way you're going to know that opportunity is at hand hallelujah it will come through the word of God uh, because one thing that God told him hallelujah he said arise and Will you be made whole? Hallelujah. He told the man. He said, arise. Hallelujah. Take up that bed. And he said, walk. Because every time you hear the word of God, it is opportunity. Hallelujah. For you to better yourself. It's an opportunity. Hallelujah. For doors to be open in your life. 
every time you hear the word of God hallelujah he is opening up opportunity for you and that you can draw in closer I wish you get with me for you to draw in closer to him every time the word goes forth hallelujah the power that comes behind the word every time hallelujah the word goes forth and you got to understand hallelujah if I hear the word hallelujah it will be a door of opportunity for my spirit and if it becomes a door of opportunity for my spirit it's going to be a door of opportunity hallelujah for my life and that's why you got to find yourself hungry for the word of God because he'll direct you to his word look at the word because the word came to him and the word spoke to him and it was the word and there was the opportunity of God it was not to prove a Bethesda it was not hallelujah the troubling of the water but it's the word that came out of God's mouth when Jesus spoke he said it will now be made whole but the word said alive hallelujah it says alive and you got to be to take the word and be able to believe the word when it comes toward you and the man had a problem he said what about these other folk and then waiting on the pool he had to exercise some faith and believe God and that's what you got to do your blessing your opportunity it may not come in on the traditional way it may not come in the way you expect it to come in I'm just going to call me into the word and look at your neighbor and say you better know that opportunity it will always come through the word look at your neighbor and say what Jesus said he said arise he said arise he said arise in other words he was saying come up come up out of where you are come up down of all the trouble you've been through come up out of the pain you endured the ridicule you endured the shame you have encountered come up out of all the suffering you have gone through you better come up out he said arise but the word of God it said God knew hallelujah he knew how long he had been through what he had gone through God knew the suffering that he had encountered and that's one thing that you can trust in God about hallelujah you don't know when he I'm going to tell you to arise but I'm going to tell you the opportunities of God it is at hand and God's going to tell you arise somebody just stand to the feet God's going to do something he's going to do something special for you come on and stand to your feet come on stand to your feet Come on, stand to your feet. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. It's two minutes to one. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Hallelujah. You already made a step. You already made a step. The scripture said, arise. Hallelujah. The word of God. When the word of God says, arise. Hallelujah. You got to exercise some faith. Just like the lame man. Just like the impotent man. He had to do something beyond the norm he had to do something different and that he had been doing in the past he had to expect God to come a different way he had to expect God to work in a different path you ought to be like the impotent man when Jesus told him to arise look at you when I told you to stand you said do I have to when I told you to get up you said do I have to but I'm here to tell you God just wants you to arise because he gonna bless you because this is hallelujah God gonna bless you with opportunity when the word go forth he wants to bless you hallelujah with some opportunity you said I've been waiting for a long time hallelujah I've been in pain for a long time I've been crying for a long time don't God hit me don't they know where I am 
well he just set you up hallelujah for the door of opportunity or to come your way hallelujah he just set you up hallelujah for joy to come your way because he said weeping and endure for a night hallelujah but joy but joy he said it cometh in the morning God set you up to get you some joy he's trying to set you up hallelujah for your opportunity for the thing to change in your life are you looking for God to move how you think he should move but he gonna move in a different way he gonna move in a different way hallelujah you've already took the first step you've already took hallelujah the first step he told the man to arise he told him to arise He said, take up that bed of affliction. 